If you learn to read and write English in school, you might have been told at some point when trying to spell something to just sound it out. We all know this is bad advice, I hope, but let's just entertain some examples that are extremely common. Said. Unusual. When. Why. People. Why is there an O in people? Thought. There's a G in thought? Could. Why is there an L in could? Huh? Huh? Anyway, of course, you do go on to learn more spelling conventions like the infamous I before E, unless something else is going on. These mnemonics are all just the result of trying to help people learning English cope with all these different spelling systems that English speakers have borrowed from Celtic and Romance and really languages from all over the place at various stages in their developments. Not to mention all the Greek and Latin borrowings, and of course, there are all the silent letters people added just for the aesthetic, like the B and thumb and dumb. But instead of trying to keep track of all these different hybridizing systems, what if we just represent each phoneme or speech sound with a unique grapheme or written symbol? The Shavian alphabet was created in the 1950s and completed by the early 1960s as part of a contest to create an alphabet that more closely suits the phonemic inventory of modern English. Fellow YouTuber and person called Rob, Rob Words, made a video which there'll be a link to in the description, all about the design of the Shavian alphabet. The letters are sorted into four groups, tall, those with ascenders, deep, those with descenders, short, they're short, and a compound, which are combinations of other letters. But before we go any further, this Shavian alphabet was made in the UK like half a century before I was born. So if this is going to be a truly phonemic alphabet, we'll have to make some adjustments to it along the way. The tall letters and the deep letters actually come in pairs with each other, so we'll just look at both at the same time. The first letters are peep and bib, which make the p and b sounds. And yes, all the letters do have fun names, peep and bib. Next up, tot and diddle. Tot spells both the t sound at the beginning of its name, but also the almost completely silent sound at the end of its name. Tot, tot, tot. The letter diddle spells both the d sound and the tapped R sound in the middle of its name. Diddle. 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 Next up, it's kick and gag. K and guh. Fee and vow. F and v. Thigh and they. Thigh spells the voiceless th sound, whereas they spells the voiced th sound. Or, depending on who I'm talking to and how carefully I'm articulating myself, the voiceless sound and voiced th sound. Moving on, we have voiceless so and voiced zoo, voiceless sure and voiced measure. Then we have church, which makes the ch sound, and judge, which makes the j sound. Church and judge also spell the ch and j sounds in words like triple and dragon, where you might have otherwise expected the letters tot and diddle, but I don't call this thing a, and I'm gonna have to try really hard to say it like this, I don't call this thing a terrain, and I don't call this thing a drum. I call them trains and drums. As part of a phenomenon that Dr. Jeff Lindsay calls train changing and drum majoring. Check his video out for more details about that. The last four tall and deep letters are yeah, which makes the ya yeah sound, Wo, which makes the w sound. Hung, which makes the velar nasal ng sound at the end of its name. And haha, which isn't funny at all, but it makes the h sound. The short letters start off with another two pairs. Level and river, which can make both the l and r sounds at the beginning of their names, but also the syllabic ul and er sounds in the second syllable of their names. Level, river. Level, river. 
Similarly, amalgam and nation both spell the syllabic and non-syllabic nasal sounds, m and n. The remainder of the short letters in the Shavian alphabet represent 16 vowel sounds. But the letters up and on spell sounds that I don't distinguish when I talk, so we can just get rid of those two and keep the rest. The letter if makes the i sound in its name. Eat makes the e sound in its name, or like at the end of the word, happy. Elk makes the a sound. Age makes the a sound. The letter ash spells the a sound, but I might pronounce that closer to a diphthong a, especially before nasal consonants. Like, compare how I say the word cat and how I say the word cam. Cat, cam, cat cam, cat cam, cat cam. The letter isle spells the I sound, like in its name, isle, or in the first syllable of the word, bisect. The original Shavian alphabet calls this letter ice, but in my dialect, the word ice is pronounced with a different vowel, I, as opposed to the sound I, like in eyes. Eyes, ice, I, I. This distinction is almost never phonemic, but there does exist the pair of words rider and writer. Do you hear the difference? Rider, like horses, as opposed to writer, like books. She's a horseback rider, she's a nonfiction rider. Rider, writer, writer, writer. So let's make use of the letter undo, or schwa, which spells the uh sound, and combine it with the letter if to spell the raised i in ice, as opposed to the unraised i in aisle. The raising of i to i in certain phonetic contexts is just one piece of a phenomenon called Canadian raising. Some people also raise the ow sound to o, like in the stereotypically Canadian sounding house and about. That said, I'm not Canadian, and neither does my ow vowel ever get raised all the way to o. If anything, ow as in cow loud and cloudy contrasts just barely with o as in So in the original take of this, I gave just like the worst possible examples for some reason. So these are different examples that are hopefully better examples. <clears throat> The soldier bowed, but what about? Don't gouge the couch. A loud sound came from the louts in the south. Okay, back to your regularly scheduled programming. So we can just keep this letter to spell the unraised ow and just rename it something like cow, I guess. But to spell the raised up o sound, we'll again combine two letters. Undo and book spell o as in ouch oh yeah this one is the vowel book it makes the uh vowel in the middle of its name or like in foot and could then there's oak which makes the o sound like in its name or at the end of the word go ooze which makes the oo sound like at the end of flu oil makes the oi sound ah makes the ah sound like in the first and last syllables of the word octagon and the last of the short letters is awesome which makes the ah sound the shavian alphabet also includes eight compound letters but because my dialect doesn't distinguish between the er in earth and the er in array we'll only need seven compound letters r or air er Ear. There's also the letter Ian, which spells the Ia sound like in its name, but also at the end of words like Cahokia. And finally, the letter U, as in cute and human. Let's just take a look at an actual example of something transcribed in this new Shavian or Shavy alphabet. Criticism of particular capitalist enterprises or their particular practices did sometimes surface over the last half century. It was possible to target capitalist enterprises' monopolistic activities 
racial and gender discrimination, and environmental degradation, even their corruption of political institutions. However, critics learn to focus only on specific misbehaviors, not on the economic system that induced, rewarded, and reproduced them. For anybody learning or who has learned English, it's painfully obvious that the letters we write don't exactly mirror the sounds that we speak when we read them. And I'm not here to argue whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. I think it's probably more so a neutral thing. I'll leave a link in the description to a web tool that lets you type the Shavian alphabet because all the letters are part of Unicode. I'll also link in the description to the font that I used. I designed this font special so that the digraph characters for I and O, when typed out, would automatically combine to look like one letter form. Also, for any returning viewers, yes, I am still making my Toki Panito. Or rather, my Toki Panitos. Uh, yeah, uh, like, subscribe, ding dong. That's all for now. Bye bye. <laughs>